and my story to go with the Maradona uh, thing. Ian Monroe, I don't know if you remember Ian Monroe, played no. with Rangers, and he uh, marked Maradona that day, and uh, he got a video to commemorate his contribution to, to marking Maradona, yeah. and when I was at Hibs, I asked him for a loan of it to see it, because I couldn't remember much about the game, and he gave me the, the would it would have been VHS or Beta Max or whatever it was, you, you know, it would have been yeah, and I took, it, <laughs> I took it home to watch it, and foolishly I left it in, and the, the kids uh, oh. taped over Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, yeah. so he's never ever seen that <laughs> clip of Mark and Maradona. It would have gone <laughs> That was, well, Ruffy, that, was, that was the sort of a Ruffy, the thing is, you're talking about Messi there, about 100 million a week. Charlie's obviously it's payday for Charlie today, so I know, I know you've got. Oh, I forgot about uh, that. I know yeah, you've yeah. got well, something for Charlie beside uh, you. Daisy's not obviously with us anymore, we know he's. Well, he's coming back. Yeah, he's coming back, yeah. but uh, he's, he's meet up once a month, obviously, right. with that big van outside, and he'd left us. He'd left us. Uh, Bag full of money. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, only, that's, it's only two weeks. That's about heavy, yeah, that's he'll, he'll bring the other two weeks. Yeah. So, sign off. Well, <laughs> incidentally, the, the, you, you did say you, you didn't want the, the serial numbers to be matching, so it's quite, it's quite good. They're all in there. Yeah. They're used good banknotes, thing. which are is they, fantastic. Are the green ones or the purple ones? Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a purple By one in my way, life. You've watched all so. these uh, counterfeit uh, programmes. Uh, heavy, that, isn't it? Peter's had it in here. Coins. Peter's had it in here all day, so the top one will just be 20 quid but this will be bits of paper <laughs> I spent a lot of my youth in Glasgow City nightclubs and I can tell you right now from my experience of dancing like a mad octopus yeah. it's going to be very difficult <laughs> to dance in a nightclub Ruffy with a mask on yeah. and be able to breathe there are I've said to you numerous occasions the nightclubs we used to go to were pitch black and when the lights went up at the end of the night you wondered what you had yeah, no, you didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you didn't know what you did <laughs> You didn't know what you've been talking to yeah. for the last two years. Put your hands in that magic bag. <laughs> yeah, I think how she felt, Ronnie. Yeah. I saw your face there. At least um, there's a mask and cover it up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is the great thing about it. Somebody said to me this morning, you know, masks in a nightclub, and I thought, I know, but at I least. Feel no, no, I feel no mind it. Well, I was just about to say to you <laughs> the long walk over to get the long knock back, and then the long walk back to your mate. 86 was when I first went into Rangers, and that was when the, the soonest. Revolution kind of started, so there were some top top players, you know, yeah. coming in there to start off. So it was. Uh, when you think of, uh, if I was pushing you right now, and I'd say who would be the two stone wallers you'd pick right away in your dream team, just so that we know what's coming. Ian Durant, right away. So that's there's one right away that, um, Henry Wilkins. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, um, that was. I mean, he was just a. A gentleman, yeah. you know, but what a, what a player he was. And that was him just coming towards, you know, his end of his career after Rangers, he went to, to Hibs, you know, but phew, he he's a great lad as well. Um, oh, my yeah. last uh, night out with Ray, sadly, he's no longer with us, Ruffy, but uh, I had a major session with him in a London pub. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just don't expect anybody to say that, but but I'm sorry. Uh, well, we went to a quiz night in a London pub, uh, and it was absolutely fantastic. He was such a great lad. The way I, the first time I saw it, I went, oh, that's a, that's a full soft. But then the second time I saw it, and the, the reason I, I, I went for the penalty was I looked at the boy Bates. He never, he never challenged it at all. He knew what he had done. Yeah. He knew he'd tugged the boy's jersey. Was it enough of a tug for him to get in the way he went down? No, but it's a tug of the jersey and it's a, it's a penalty. If, uh, he, if and, he tugs and, it anywhere else, yeah. it's a foul. I mean, a penalty's not the worst punishment. I had a, a pal that got the jail <clears throat> for having a tug on a jersey. He was a dairy farmer. <laughs> 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 I knew I could see it coming. You know, you could just see him. <coughs> chip, he said as well. Up for a <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's just small. Honestly, you could go in the gym and do 100 press-ups or 50 press-ups and go out and still doing something. It's mm. instead of just walking out. Do you know what I mean? And it just, I think more, it helps you physically, but more mentally. It tells you, oh, I've done something there. I can, I can go and have, like for instance, yesterday I was going to my wife's mum's for food and I went and done a 30 minute spin bike before I went because I thought if there's a dessert on the table, I can go and do it because I've just cancelled it out. And yeah. just mentally, because the dessert's actually not going to do in because my diet's good enough. But then if I do that, I won't worry about it mentally yeah. because I can tell myself oh, I've earned that, and it's just small things to change your mentality. But yeah, I would have to say obviously when when Craig was getting near my fifty three, I was very vocal of uh, get him out of the squad. <laughs> but uh, after <laughs> after he surpassed it, and now he's at sixty, 
if he hadn't had that injury that we were talking about, he would have been challenging Jim Layton's 92. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, if you were in the bath, Gary, um, I was sitting on a couch thinking I'm going in to watch the second instalment of Ozark. Um, and then all of a sudden we have to just say to everybody, look, hang fire, we're on to extra time. Ah, it was uh, quite surreal because I, I, like you said, jumped in the bath thinking the game was done and <laughs> my son comes uh, banging in the door, it's just one each, one each, you need to get it. And I was like, right, okay. Comes through and he, he, he came running through thinking, I'll wind up my dad up, play a prank on him. It's 2-1, it's 2-1. Two, one, it's two, one. They went, they actually did score, it's 2-1. <laughs> I was like, right, there you go. So a bit of a tame prank, surely a two-bar electric <laughs> fire in the bath, that would be that. That's why you have a, a better that's, one. That's why you have a lock in the door. <laughs> So fans. I spotted coming up on my feed, by the way, would you oh. believe, they've, they've got the 50 year book out. Yeah. I mean, the and replica medals. And a, and a taxi, I've seen a taxi the other day. Have you got me a replica medal? Well, have yeah. you got me a replica medal? Yeah, I don't know much there yet, but I'll, once I find out much there, I'll, I'll, I'll sell you one. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll sell you one. You know, I'll, I'll hang on and buy yours at Christie's because you're bound to sell it. Dave Cormack, without anybody in the media being precious, Dave Cormack has every right to back his manager. I of course, I can't be. I can't be. I was going to say. I can't, I was going to say. I can't be arsed. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this whole siege mentality, this whole Aberdeen thing oh. of everybody's got an agenda against them, uh, that's been done. Aye. Fergie's done aye. that. Aye. You know, the whole thing is just look at your results. Just you know, look at the way the team's playing. The back line's murder time. I think it would be remiss of me not to compliment certain aspects of what the SFA have done with grassroots football. There's been certain aspects of which I think they've put a lot of work into. I think it would be lazy of us just to say everything's been dismissed. <clears throat> but there was a lot of what Henry McLeish has suggested. I think even the ex-First Minister will be disappointed has not been implemented. And it's not been implemented, in my mind, only in my view, because Celtic and Rangers scupper everybody else's progress. It's all about those two clubs and they drag everybody back. And before we get battered, and we all get battered in the next 20 seconds by people saying they're the two biggest clubs, they stop the progress, the voting structure is wrong. Henry McLeish is asking why they're not in there. They're not in there because by the time this review comes out, they'll scupper it. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't involve them getting more money than everybody else, they will scupper it. Listen, I had to come back. I didn't want to miss Celtic and Rangers in the Champions League. <laughs> Who isn't a plane? Who isn't a plane? <laughs> What? <laughs> You're the prophet of doom. Mm. <laughs> every, ah. every player, every player that's had that figure. Now, now let's not forget in Scotland, we have, as you know, the lunatic. So, you're so what no, do you want for Portis? No, no. Then you want five million for Portis? No, no. no, no what well, I'm saying, no, a million what I'm quid's you, enough. What I'm saying to you, when Tam and I last season, when you were here, we had a constant battle with everybody going. Morelos, 20 million. No, yep. you'll get 30. Yep. Eduard, 30 yep. million. You were lucky you get two quenchy cups and a kick can at times for them now. It's, it's fluctuating. It's fit, man. Yeah, no, that's a great. Hey, if, that's you're, the if you're not though. performing at your level, yeah. Eduard value. never scored last night. Where's he go for now? Right, you're still going to get five to eight million for Eduard. Three million now. No, no, no. Five, five to eight million for Eduard. It's still not going to be yeah. double figures. Oh, so the Celtic fans can come for me again well, tonight. I don't mind that because at the end of the day, I agree listen, with him. It's, he, he's going to get punted. <clears throat> and they're going to get him he out of this window. He, he needs oh. to get punted. He's listen. For at the end of the day, they're carrying him. He thinks Pelly's the greatest ever. Yeah, absolutely. You don't you, you don't play in a World Cup final. Um, Eighteen, seventeen. 17. You don't play. Scored in a World. twice. Yeah, it's just not happening. You know, um, absolutely fantastic. Ian Doherty says George Best for Northern Ireland at Hamden. Great shout! I actually saw George Best in a hip strip at Easter Road, Ruffy. Yeah, um, I actually saw George Best in a shower at Hibs. <laughs> 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 so there you are. We've now moved. We've now moved the chat on dramatically, Richard. People say three one down. You're Rangers football club. Eh? You're you're at the biggest club in Scotland. You're one of the biggest clubs in the world. Doesn't matter if you're four four nil. That you still have that empathy to go and try and win the game. Eh? Listen, if Rangers scored within the f next five minutes of the second half and it's three two, it's game on. Eh? So to have that mentality to go and change and say, oh, three one game is over. I wasn't. I'm not buying it. Um, but. 
you know, sometimes you, you say things and you'll regret them, and he, he might regret it, and we'll see tomorrow if, if the manager picks exactly. up. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, Tom, it's absolutely fantastic. I know you said that you really, um, you know, you really liked Richard Foster, and you didn't think we were going to see Charlie again. But he's owe you a tenner. Neither did I. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, the train's he's, back on. He's the train's back on. He's but brand new. The viewings have gone back up since I've come back on today because <laughs> they were done for the last couple of weeks. I hope you can turn it around. It needs. It needs Charlie Adam back in the side, that's a stonewall certainty. It needs Griffiths um, scoring goals um, and certainly not firing flares with his <laughs> left foot into the crowd. And I don't know, I don't know about you, uh, Tam, but... Um, it's welcome again to Scottish football. <laughs> well, you know, MD. I mean, honestly, but the boy, I mean... First of all, let's condemn the St Johnson fans for right. God's sake. Well, we're for talking the, about for the whole story about it. I mean, the, the the stuff that they were shouting yeah. to him is bang out of order. But to be fair, he should. It was always going to happen. He should know better. It was always going to happen, and he must. Oh, now, no. I don't know about you, by the way, but there's nothing worse off <laughs> than a footballer who takes his shirt off <laughs> and starts doing pull-ups on the big metal bar. I mean, that would do your head in, wouldn't it? Yeah, I suppose it would. He's probably got a wee video of John Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep him, keep him in check. You know? <laughs> that'll get back. He'll tell him. That'll get back to him. I'm not sure yet yeah, about Scotland's score. I think we're, we're a bit prone to exaggeration at times. Oh, wait a minute, we were clambering uh, for Nathan Patterson. He got in. Yeah, I think uh, Tony Ralston was a player that was coming in for all sorts of criticism a month ago. I think you can applaud what he's contributed in recent weeks, but I think it, I think it, there, there's no harm in setting your ambitions there. But I think it's maybe just a bit too early for him just now. Um, I have to tell you, somebody just sent me a couple of things that I, I want to get your thoughts on. I'm going to get your thoughts on the top scorer as well, but um, there is actually somebody on on, on the feed... <laughs> you know how the YouTube you can just put any name you want at the moment until the legislation comes in, Tam. But there's one here. It's Tam McManus's hairy ankles. I mean, honestly, talk about coming. Talk about coming up with names. I've, I've killed him with wearing socks today. Yeah, absolutely. You've done Sorry. it. Yeah. Do you have hairy ankles? <laughs> That's no. all. Yeah. It's just because sure I, I know some people actually look and uh, and see. Mm, now you're all right. Shaves them. Uh, here's a little bit of news. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet. I wouldn't rule that out, Ruffy. I thought it was a great game, actually. Uh, for a nil nil, you know, usually at a nil nil, you're just thinking of a terrible game. But I thought both teams went at it. I thought Hibs started the better side. They uh, got the ball down early and uh, were more composed. But Hearts grew into the game. And, uh, you know, Ben Woodburn, I thought, was excellent for them. I thought I thought Hearts were excellent as well. I thought I thought the two, the two Edinburgh sides. You know, they, they'll be battling out for third. I think Aberdeen have got to improve a fair bit to get up to kind of Hibs and the Hearts. Hibs have, have built a team, have built a squad over the last two years with Jack Ross. Robbie Nielsen's brought in what he had to bring in, uh, I think, in the summer. So I think that both Edinburgh teams, both sets of supporters would have went home happy yesterday. I think both sets of, of players gave everything. Uh, nil now a draw was a fair result. Both goal goalkeepers had some tremendous saves, but I thought it was a great advert for Scottish football. Thank you. It is a tremendously sad day uh, for Scottish football. Absolutely. I mean, one of the greats is gone. It's as simple as that. One of the great football beasts that, that walked across our landscape is is no more. A man, not just a, a great football man, not just a you know an impressive coach, but a, a very good man, a man of substance, a man of integrity, a man who, uh, of great generosity of spirit. Peter, we know that in this studio for 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 things that he, he did for for uh, this company, this this station, this this show. Uh, and I personally can see things that he did for me as well, you know, um, uh, in a professional sense. So I think it would be, uh, I think there'll be, we always talk about the big great divide in Scottish football, and I think there'll be grieving right across uh, the divide in Scottish football today. Um, a man of true substance is gone. Did you get a testimonial? Yes. Ah, there you look at Hall of Fame. <laughs> Got to be in a hall. I don't think I am. Oh Actually, my no, you've got to be on. No, get on the no, phone of Raymond Gummery. Raymond Gummery, yeah. what do you do with that? The Hall of Fame, no, surely. No, we're not. Wow, uh, that is amazing. I'm gobsmacked. Famous, famous characters down there through the years, but no, that's... That's uh, so oh, past us. That is incredible, by the way. You're only four Hall of Fame short of equaling Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> See if you get your finger out. Celtic had an opportunity, I think, to take the moral high ground here. To come out and say, enough's enough. Let's go back to some kind of normality, mm -hmm. to some kind of um, division of tickets that allows supporters to come into the ground. 
if that's perceived as you blinked first, yeah. then so be it. You you turn your back and, and you take the, the moral high ground and you take the PR one, I think, that comes with it. I think I, I think it's boring, to be honest with you. I think it's a boring argument. Uh, I think if you've got anything sensible about you and you've been to the games when you've had quota of, of fans in from both sides and you've been where it's one-dimensional, yeah. I think you know it's a different occasion entirely. Well, well, the other thing about it we've missed over the last week or two, Ruffy, is uh, Charlie's transfer mind because he sets the transfer value yeah. in Scotland of players um, you know, from time to time. I know a lot of people hang on his every word. Um, you know, Dembele... Um, Dud, five million, going down to two at one point. Edward, <laughs> point. Edward, Edward, five million. Edward, Edward point. yeah. Yep. No, he's, he's off. He scored. I think he yeah, might scored. be. I'm not, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. not great. What about the Premiership? All right, all right, come down. My mum and dad were still, my mum was still basically every every home game uh, she? down there. Uh, she had, she used to have like a wee, uh, a wee book and it would like have all the fixtures for the next three months and oh. it was, uh, she would have on it like if it was like Bristol Rovers at home and it was like a, a train if she was get, obviously getting the train down or if it was just like flying so she used to plan it as I said three uh -huh. three four months in advance and it was always like she'd go on and find cheapest way to get there and it was a, either as I said either by train so it was better just to drive if it was like flying and I think it was one of the games it was down in uh, South End I think it was and she texted me the day before saying like, I'm not going to be able to manage, like I've looked at it and I'd need to get like four or five different trains and I was like, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Yeah. South End in like the middle of January, I was like, don't, don't worry about it. Stuart Robertson did mention the fact that, okay, the Sky deal, while welcome, Scottish football has been undersold um, and he's talking about the sponsorship is, itself of the SPFL with Cinch. Again, not a great deal as far as the amount of money that all the clubs will get. But I think the the only thing I would question Stuart Robertson on is we are um, a country that hasn't sold itself well, certainly hasn't projected a great image that would interest big investors coming in. You know, we look like a, 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 a we look like a group of just squabbling um, people fighting outside a pub and can never agree. Mm. That's that, that's that's the impression I get. Why would you want to come and pay big money? For Scottish football, when really the image of it, I think, over two, three, four years has been tarnished. We we would train for say ten o'clock to one o'clock, and then after that, a group of us would go and have a lunch somewhere, yeah. have a couple of beers. Liquid. Yeah, a couple of beers, nothing like outrageous or anything like that. But yeah. that was part and parcel. And even at Patrick Thistle, we, on a Friday after training, we used to go down to Jack and Ellie's and have rolls and bacon and Knickerbocker glories and. But, <laughs> 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 that was not what I was expecting him to that's, say. That's you know, especially when uh, you mentioned knickers. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what it was like, you know. No, it, I, I think it could be, you know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be very tight. It'll go down to the, I think it'll go down to the split mm. and how the fixtures come out in that split in the last four or five games. I think it'll go that close. Um, but where I, I think Rangers will invest in January as well, so they'll that'll be yeah. added as well. So they'll. I think there's enormous pressure on them to invest in January. Yeah. You know, I think there's uh, by uh, you know uh, by January they really have to somehow come up with never mind the seven and a half million, uh, mm -hmm. Tam. They have to somehow come up with revenue to bolster Stephen Jarrett's squad because I think if it's tight, if there's a couple of points in it. We already know that Celtic have got two or three yeah. people on their target. Um, it's good fun doing it. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. And the reason I ask you that is because that's why I decided to get you to come and work for us, because I, I, I like the fact of you not speaking just to Aberdeen fans and us to give you a good kicking. And it's worked out that way, Tam, because we have absolutely <laughs> battered him. His team have been rank rotten. Oh, it's that, every, it's that hard, week, every week he's come on, instead of this fawning Aberdeen fans, <laughs> we've just been battering him, right? It's like a Will Smith get-together with him, isn't it? <laughs> oh, he's had a tank in all year. He's, he's, he's aged about 20 years and on in one season. After yeah. the glory of Derek McInnes years, he's, oh, he's uh, done the down. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, Richard. When Andrew started on the show, he jet black hair. <laughs> <laughs> right, were these in any particular order? No, we're just no. firing, firing. Right, there uh, we go. Right. A wee... So this is a nice one. This, is, this is from Andrew, who's our producer. Um, I have to apologise, I'm hopeless. 
What? Uh, opening presents nicely. Uh, no, no, you don't nice want it. Don't worry about paper. Old VHS porn note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that? There isn't any answer. No. There's nothing behind some of those. No, there's nothing. Right. And uh, that, this is I good. Can't, oh, fantastic. Big, yeah. Uh, big go for, yep. You That's happy with that? Is, is there pictures in it, yeah? Yep. There, <laughs> there, are, there are pictures in it. But what a prize it will be, Huey. It's just a box, so It's just it's a the box. box. Yeah, well, we can't <laughs> afford the thing inside that. Yeah. But it's a lovely box. S series. I mean, I think uh, I think this is the all mod cons one that everybody's trying to get. Huey. I would I would have no idea, of course, yeah. what this is all about. It's a bit like... Yeah, a friend of mine, uh -huh. who I play tennis with, queued outside Argos for tours to get one of their boxes. Well, and there you go. There you are. So it's the S series one, mm. Hugh. It's a bit like when when your um, mum and dad came in and said, "Look, this thing has three channels on it, and if you hit it, <sighs> pictures come through." Oh, I remember that day. <laughs> So, I remember that day. So there you are. Yeah. Just in, uh, incidentally, um, good luck with everybody with the competition. Mm. They got at Dortmund. You know, Dort Dortmund are suspect at the back. Like who Moses, as Charlie said, he, Morelos gave him a tanking over the two games. Mm. I mean, he looked a poor player. He's obviously won the World Cup. You know, won the Bundesliga. He's a top player. But yeah. Morelos ran him ragged again last night. Kent, both those two were the key players for Rangers. I thought they gave them a wee bit of impetus going forward. And European football seems to suit them. But brilliant result for Rangers. Brilliant result for Scottish football. We'll probably go into the draw a little bit later and I think they got fortunate in the draw as well. So they'll be looking to, you know, get into the quarterfinals now, semi-finals. Good but, uh, fullbacks. Gary O'Connor, Riordan is probably the two you'd mention. Um, but, no, it's, it's just a waste. I think Lee Griffiths is, what, 31 years old. He's still, he's still got plenty to offer, but if yeah. he's not going to, he's, he's not prepared to get himself in proper shape, you know, he's he's not going to fulfil his potential, sadly. It, it must, it, you would think it would strike a note because we've seen all the, the present day players now, they're, they're all machines. No, if you're in a you can't dressing room, you can't just combine room, talent now. Know, you need to be fit. I know. If you're yeah. in a dressing room with fit, fit guys, and you think it's okay to walk about the way you are, no, that doesn't send out the right, the right signals up here. Yeah, you but I, I, I don't think, and I hope I'm not being, you know, too disingenuous to a, a, a lot of footballers in in Scotland, but I don't think there's a higher, I don't think there's a higher percentage or enough of a percentage positive sense that have the same mentality as the Premier League in England. You have to be mm -hmm. super fit. You have to have a high work rate. You have to have the talent. You have to have the commitment, the desire. Uh, I, I mean, I give you, quite simply, you know, in the last, what, 48 hours, I've been in the company and I sit down with uh, Chris Hoy. Mm -hmm. And Chris Hoy just basically said, you, you have to put it in on a Tuesday when the rain is belting down and you have to get out on your bike. Uh, once you download the app, you can actually post messages in submissions as well. Uh, and we'll read out as many of them as we possibly can. So good luck with that. Um, if there is any back chat today, if Ruffy speaks out of line, Alison, uh, the way things are going <laughs> at the moment, you're more than welcome to just to walk up there and belt on one in the jaw. Apparently that's the norm now. Channel my inner Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. I'll need the names of those Celtic fans <laughs> to <be talking> to <laughs> <me>. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> For, hey, there's a few, few Celtic fans throwing things at this telly right now, isn't it? <laughs> Listen to us. Open a door or a window or something. I mean, honestly, I mean, Ruffy, I mean, I could, I could do a separate show in his last line, which is Rangers are going to be the richest club in Scotland. Rangers will look at this and say, there's 30 million if mm -hmm. they can get there. Absolutely. They'll look at the season tickets, 50,000. I think they will then look at starting to say, right, let's clear the decks. They've put a lot of money into the stadium. They've spent a lot of money, you know, upgrades in Auchenhowie uh, and looking at backing the manager's plans. So I think they'll try and clear the boards, Charlie, rather, uh, before they get to a point oh. and start saying, look, we're, we're in a financially better place. Gabriel there, and we'll decide how much he's worth, Gabriel, because Charlie's the man who sets transfer fees, let me tell you. Raving about <laughs> Ali McCann, he reckons, he's, he reckons he's, he's better than Ferguson. Yes. He's on a par with Turnbull. He's worth 1.75 million. 20 million. What? 20 million. Only because my agent looks after him. So we're all going to so get a cut of that. <laughs> yeah, right. 20 million. Yeah, yeah. I've got Ross County down there because I just don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got 38 weeks to go. By the way, Charlie, you don't get that. You don't get that punditry in five live, do you? I just don't like it. <laughs>
<laughs> I was about to invite you to Ross County Dundee at the ends as well, but I don't oh, think you've done no. it. <laughs> okay, I'm not travelling away up there, and you've been up there in December. Uh, on a sad day, if you are a lover of football, look back with great affection at the Celtic side of 1967 that won the European Cup. Because today, at the age of 83, sadly, another Lisbon Lion has passed away. Bertie Auld, certainly one of the most charismatic figures ever to play for Celtic and of course one of the players that was etched in Celtic's history when they defeated Inter Milan by two goals to one. Um, he was quite simply um, not only a vital part of the team um, but through the later years certainly one of the most uh, funny, entertaining and of course diehard Celtic fans you could ever wish to meet. He had um, a career as a player and manager um, of Partick Thistle. We're going to get Ruffy's thoughts in a minute. He was manager of Hibernian too. Um, but I think most of the, uh, the majority of football fans will look back on Bertie wearing the hoops of Celtic. Hi there. If you enjoyed watching our content, don't forget to subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel.